May 1st in Bethlehem and in Jerusalem, the joy and thanksgiving of the Holy Land for the beatified Pope, and with the approval of Israel. The Word of God is the foundation of the spiritual life, the 37th Biblical Theology Course at the Studium Biblicum Franciscanum in Jerusalem. From Nazareth to Jerusalem by foot, the special pilgrimage of the English journalist David Brown. The place where the risen Jesus appeared to his disciples, the Franciscan sanctuary of the primacy of Peter. Ci troviamo qui a Betlemme a rendere grazie a Dio per la beatificazione di Giovanni Paolo II. We are here in Bethlehem to give thanks to God for the beatification of John Paul II. In Bethlehem to give thanks for this Pope. It was a moving commemoration full of gratefulness as Monsignor Antonio Franco recalled Carol Wojtyla at the Sunday morning Mass in Bethlehem. During the Thanksgiving ceremony for the beatification of John Paul II, celebrated together with the Feast of Workers, the Apostolic Nuncio depicted the picture of the pontiff who has done much for the Holy Land. The Day of St. Joseph the Worker brought together a few hundred local Christians at the John Paul II Foundation for an event that had been awaited for five years, in communion with Rome and with the whole Church. Good wishes also arrived from the Palestinian Authority. An exceptional guest was the Prime Minister, Salam Fayyad, who inaugurated a three-meter-high statue of the Polish Pope in the court of the Foundation. Soon after, the security barrier that still divides the two peoples was built, said the Prime Minister. The Pope, whom the people wanted to be saint now, pronounced the words that moved the world. The Holy Land does not need walls, but bridges. He was loved by all, Christians and Muslims, and one sees the same gratefulness in the eyes of Father Ibrahim Faltas, promoter of the event. Everyone did everything to thank this Pope. We all know what Bethlehem meant for Pope John Paul II. The Holy Land needs bridges of love, peace and charity. Let's hope that he is interceding for us from there above. Also in Jerusalem, the local church gathered at the Notre Dame Center, where the faithful could follow the entire ceremony of the beatification live on the big screen of the auditorium. This message uh, that people in this difficult situation don't have to be afraid. Peace with them, the whole world is with them. In the afternoon, all the representatives of the local churches gathered together at the Latin Patriarchate for the Mass of Thanksgiving. The Latin Patriarch Fuadtoile celebrated the function together with the Catholic ordinaries of the Holy Land in a church full of people. Among them, there were some Polish pilgrims, who also commemorated the Feast of the Divine Mercy, which had been desired by Wojtyla. It's very meaningful because uh, John Paul was a Pope of Mercy to celebrate especially in the Holy Land also because also he was a Pope of Peace. That's why for us to join together. Una festa de ringraziamento. This is a feast of thanksgiving but also of commitment. It is a way that John Paul II left us to demonstrate to the world that faith is a joyful gift and that the Holy Land draws everyone to increase in us this consciousness that Jesus was raised here to take the message of peace to all people. The Custos of the Holy Land in his homily recalled how Kero Wojtyla desired peace for Jerusalem. He always raised his assertive voice, he said, with great authority to invite all sides to bring an end to the acts of violence, which are a cause of greater violence. For this untiring commitment, also, all of the Holy Land is grateful to the finally blessed John Paul II. Pope John Paul II beatified before a huge crowd. Also in Israel, the events of May the 1st in Rome did not go unnoticed. The Jerusalem Post featured a detailed account of the beatification and a year-by-year -year summary of the milestones of his pontificate. In Haaretz, the emphasis was placed on the relationship of John Paul II with the Jewish people, who were represented in Rome by a group who wanted to show through their presence, the article explains, 
Their appreciation for the efforts of the pontiff to overcome the tortured two millennia history of Catholic Jewish relations. But the first pages of the newspapers, Monday, May 2nd, were especially dedicated to the memory of the Holocaust, commemorated in Israel on this date. At 10 a.m., all cars stopped at the sound of sirens, which called everyone to recollect themselves for two minutes, at the workplace but also in the streets, each one standing next to their cars, in prayer and in memory. The Word of God is Present, an event that involves one's entire life in the encounter with the person of Christ. The Apostolic Exhortation Verbum Domini has become the subject of study and reflection in the 37th updating course on Biblical Theology in Jerusalem. The document, which originated in the 12th Ordinary Assembly of the Synod of Bishops in 2008, has been described as a te deum to the Word. The first reason lies in what we are. We are a school of biblical and archaeological science, a faculty, or a studium biblicum franciscanum. And so it seemed to us not only a joy, but also a duty to provide a higher and broader reflection. We did it under the perspective of the spiritual life, that is, how the Word of God enlightens, inspires, and supports the spiritual life of believers. La parola di Dio illumina, ispira, sostiene la vita spirituale dei credenti. The course which took place in St. Francis Hall at the Curia of the Custody of the Holy Land has been enriched by the contributions of many teachers from Sudium Biblicum and elsewhere. The keynote speaker was Father Paolo Martinelli, professor and dean of the Franciscan Institute of Spirituality in Rome, while Father Eugenio Aliata guided the biblical excursions. The great relevance of the document is to remember how the Word of God is not just a word of the past, but it's something that happens to us today. The Word of God continues, Father Martinelli, is a fact and an event. It is the very person of Christ who meets us and involves us. Thus, by its nature, with its character of an event, it tends to involve and transform our lives from within. It is necessary to go from knowing to tasting. The spiritual life is feeling the taste of the things that God communicates to us and experiencing the taste of His loving truth in our lives. It is an invitation to get out of a simple intellectual framework in our relationship with the Word of God towards a personal and engaging meeting with His person. It is the experience of the Apostles. Where shall we go away from you? You alone have the words of eternal life. What we experienced in meeting with you is priceless, and no one else can give it to us. The Word of God has much to say to modern man, to the man of the modern age who has rediscovered his subjectivity, his autonomy, and his creative capacity. This is a very good thing that on the other hand carries with it the risk of dissipation. And so the great question remains. What is it worth for man to win the entire world if he then loses himself? Following in the footsteps of Jesus, perhaps on the same path, a special pilgrimage from the Galilee to Jerusalem, entirely on foot. This was the goal of David Brown, a 74-year-old British journalist. Twenty years ago, David walked from Capernaum to Jericho in four days in a journey on foot through the Wadi Kelt. Since then, he dreamed of making the journey starting from Nazareth, and so he began his way from the city of the Annunciation, passing in the region of Tiberias, the Sea of Galilee, to recall the public life of Jesus. Then, Samaria and Jericho. In every place, he took a break to contemplate and commemorate the history of the biblical texts. And finally, the experience of the desert. This time, it was a partly successful adventure, but David's spirit has not weakened. The experience just ended was a kind of rehearsal, he explains, a way to know the route and become familiar with the places. The great challenge of walking along the entire route is just around the corner, hopefully to be completed before the milestone of 75 years. I wanted to walk with Jesus spiritually, but also to get to know the areas which he knew and loved when he went up to Jerusalem on pilgrimage for Passover. Well, of course, walking becomes painful after a while. One's feet become painful, one's legs become painful. 
But of course also it's necessary to drink as often as possible. Even now in April one needs to drink water as much as possible. And it's difficult to imagine Jesus and his disciples carrying enough water. David Brown worked as a radio journalist in South Africa, transmitting for four years the program Cameos of the Holy Land. As a correspondent, he followed the death of Pope Paul VI and the elections of Pope John Paul I and John Paul II with two documentaries entitled Abemos Papum. Born in England, he worked in the fields of radio and television in the Netherlands and in Israel. He currently lives in France. Despite the difficulty in walking, David expresses his happiness. I think I can say that walking with Jesus brings me closer to him understanding that he was a human being in the sense that he accepted our estate, he accepted our life with all its difficulties and its joys. He was God, of course, but he came to his tent with us, human Jesus, the Jewish Jesus, the Jesus who shared our life It is early in the morning on the Sea of Galilee. A fisherman pulls his nets into the boat, and the facts narrated in the Gospel, far away in time, become closer than ever. This is one of the most suggestive holy sites in the entire Galilee. It is the location of the Church of the Primacy of Peter, a Franciscan sanctuary that recalls one of the apparitions of the resurrected Jesus. That night, the disciples, disappointed and discouraged, did not catch anything. But all of a sudden, Jesus appears at dawn on the shore, Throw your nets and you will find. With 153 large fish, they reached the shore where the master had already prepared for them bread and roasted fish. He comforts them and confers the primacy to Peter, asking him three times, Do you love me? If you love me, feed my sheep. All this occurred here according to a very ancient tradition which also relies upon the important literary witness of the pilgrim Egeria in the 4th century, who among other things wrote in her diary. Not far from Capernaum one sees the steps of stone upon which the Lord stood. Mensa Christi is the name that has been given to the stone venerated under the altar of the church. This rock is known as the table, the Mensa of Christ, or the table of the Twelve Thrones, the Twelve Places of the Apostles. This Mensa, this rock recalls where Christ sat down to eat with his disciples. The small church of the primacy, restored in 1982, was built by the custody of the Holy Land in 1933 over the remains of a Byzantine church of the 4th or 5th century, which had fallen under the Persian and Arab invasions. In the following centuries, several witnesses talk of a church called of the Twelve Thrones or of the Apostles. Perhaps these stones in the shape of hearts which lead to the lake also refer to them. The pilgrims who today bring life to this place in a continuous but discreet way read again this passage of the Gospel on the shore, experiencing with emotion their presence here. It means to imagine seeing again the fishermen's boats arriving and Jesus standing here. I was so looking for the place where he could have prepared the fire and breakfast for his own. And so it is here where he prepares breakfast, also for us. This is beautiful. To me, this place is another confirmation of the resurrection of Christ, He who appeared and gave to eat to His own. It's very moving to me, because after having been resurrected, He still eats with His disciples. And then the church was born. He sent them, and it was the beginning of the work of mission. To me, it is here that we were born.